Well, praise the Lord. Here we are for another great faith building devotional. So good to see all the comments and the uh, uh, appreciation that you're posting online on Facebook. God bless you. Thank you for staying strong and staying in faith with us. Uh, life will get back to normal and we are winning in Jesus name. Amen. Uh, we are taking some time uh, over these past few uh, segments to deal with my book, Refusing the Care. And it's so important, you can get it uh, online or, or however you uh, desire, wherever books are sold, uh, uh, meaning Amazon, Kindle, these different places. Uh, it's so important in my mind to refuse the care because of something the Lord said to me. He said to me, cares and anxieties are one of the primary doors the enemy uses to weasel his way into people's lives. He said the main effort of the enemy is, the main effort the enemy is involved in is trying to get you over into care. And once that is accomplished, the door's open to whatever else he wants to bring into your life. And then he said, no matter the circumstance, your job is to refuse the care. And so that's what we're doing. We're refusing the care. Uh, in Luke 21, 34, we read this earlier. But Jesus said, take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts become overcharged with surfeiting, drunkenness, cares of this life, so that that day come on you unawares. Jesus said that one of the things that we had to be on guard against in the last days was the cares of this life. Notice what he said, the cares of this life. The Worst Bible says the anxieties pertaining to the affairs of this life. Whatever those may be, uh, Jesus outlined some of them in Matthew 6, what you'll eat, what you'll drink, what you're going to put on. Uh, right now in, in, in the, the, the world scene, uh, the main focus on, in people's lives is, is being well and their economy, their finances. And notice, but that becomes a care of this life. The anxieties pertaining to the affairs of this life. And Jesus placed a worried, full of care lifestyle in the same category as a drunken, self-indulgent lifestyle. That word surfeiting uh, means a overemphasis on self, uh, overindulging in things, whether it's pleasure or, or food or, or whatever. It's basically a lascivious lifestyle. And Jesus said that being overcome with that worried, full of care lifestyle is in that same category. The 20th century New Testament says, uh, your minds will be dulled. So living that care lifestyle dulls the mind. It it causes you to feel like you're walking around in a fog, right? Just, just, oh man, it's, you know, just everything's hazy, everything's foggy. Because carrying cares causes you to be distracted. It dumbs you down spiritually, all right? And at any season in our life, but especially the season that we're in now, I've got to be sharp. I got to be sharp spiritually. I've got to be hearing from God. All right. I've got to be hearing from God for my family. I've got to be hearing from God, you know, what God is saying to us, what God is speaking to us. And so I can't allow myself to enter into care and I can't allow cares to enter into my life. It's so detrimental because when I enter into care, there's things that I'll miss and uh, things that will come on me, all right, because cares become a distraction. I really want to implore you to stay focused. Isaiah 26 and 3 says that God will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. 
whose mind is stayed on him. And we read the other day in Mark chapter 4 and uh, verse 18 and uh, 19. There's so much here where this is concerned. We'll try to get through this, chap this verse in Mark 4 and then we'll go to Luke 8 in a moment uh, in today's teaching. The next week we'll pick up here again. But Mark 4, 18 and 19. And Jesus talks about these are they that are sown among thorns such as hear the word and the cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, lust of other things, entering in, choke the word and it, the word becomes unfruitful. Well, that is a preoccupied heart, all right? This person is not necessarily malicious. They're uh, not necessarily living in sin. They are simply overly concerned about the anxieties of everyday life. You know, years ago, I read a book called uh, How to Stop Worrying and Live Your Life. And it was by a, a gentleman named Dale Carnegie. And Dale Carnegie is obviously famous for how to win friends and influence people and, and, and different things. Now, he, the man had a lot of spiritual principles in his writing. But he made a statement in that book, uh, How to Never Worry Another Day in Your Life. He said, if something is worrying you, sit down and write out, the worst possible thing that could happen if that occurred. And he used the illustration of a person that maybe was concerned about their job. He said they need to sit down and write what's the worst possible outcome. Well, that they lose their job. And he said, so the worst possible outcome is that you lose your job, which means you just go find another one. Now, that may seem oversimplified, but think about this. Care will always present to you the worst case scenario and get you focused on what if you lose. Let me ask you a question. What if you don't lose? Yeah, but what if things don't get better? Yeah, but listen, what if they do? Oh, but, but things are... Horrible in the world. Yeah, but what if I told you they weren't as horrible as you think? Yeah. Amen. Folks, please hear me. I'm not telling you what to watch or what to not watch. I, I am not the governor of what you watch. But I need you to hear something. Most of the news that you hear is going to present the worst case scenario because they don't want to be accused of underplaying it. And when somebody says, it's going to get better, it's not as bad as people think, oh, they deride that, they bemoan that, they come against that. Because they don't want people in their minds to be underprepared. Folks, this Word of God is a good news book. It, it is telling you and I all the time, in spite of what you're facing, joy is coming in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. There's always something to be positive about, but I've got to refuse the care. These people weren't malicious. They were overly concerned. The word for cares here is derived from a root word, that means simply this, to be drawn in different directions or to be distracted. It's a synonym for the Greek word meaning worried. What does this mean? The entering in of cares or worry chokes the word. In this case, the word took root, it was bearing fruit, and care and worry choked the word. It became unfruitful because of carrying care meaning they were distracted. They were drawn in a different direction from the Word. The Word was here. The Word was working. Care showed up, and they were drawn in a different direction. 
They were distracted from the Word. Whatever you do, don't be distracted from the Word. Don't be drawn away from the Word. The Word is your anchor. Isaiah says that knowledge and wisdom will be the stability of your days. Knowledge and wisdom come from the Word of God. You will remain stable as long as you stay with the Word. Don't be distracted from it. Amen. In uh, Luke 8 and 14, Luke 8 and 14, this is the same account, and it says, That which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth, and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring forth no fruit to perfection. The Wuss Bible says, That which fell into thorns, these are those who heard, and under the pressure of anxieties, and wealth, and pleasure of a materialistic life, as they go on their way, are being choked, and they are not bringing forth fruit to maturity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The goal of the Christian life is maturity. The expectation of Jesus is that we grow and mature. Ephesians 4.12 says, uh, uh, For the edifying to build up advancement of the church uh, with the Word. 1 Peter 2 says that through the Word you may grow. Hebrews 5, 12 through 14 says you ought to be teachers. You should have matured to the place that you can teach others. One of the greatest enemies to that growth and advancement is the carrying of care. Care will stunt your spiritual growth because you can't bring forth fruit. It was the pressure of anxieties that caused the word to be choked in Luke 8 and stop the production of mature fruit. Understand me, as we're going to wrap this up. The enemy cannot steal the word or stop the word from bringing forth fruit in our lives if we won't cooperate with him by carrying care. He just can't. He can't. It's impossible. And the challenge there is standing. The challenge there is keeping your mind stayed on him. The enemy's number one favorite question is what if? Or what are you going to do? Or how are you going to do? Well, when the enemy says what are you going to do, years ago, I heard Brother Hagin say this, and I refer back to it, it's my pat response. The enemy uh, came to him, they were facing a financial challenge, and uh, he had not been able to make his car payment. And they had let him know that if he didn't make that payment, they were going to repossess his car. And the meeting that he was in had not given him enough money to make that car payment. And he was on the way home and the enemy was just running his mouth. What are you going to do? How are you going to make that payment? What are you going to do? He said he got home and, and late, late in, well, early in the morning or late in the night, however you want to look at it. And, uh, he said as he laid down, the enemy kept running his mouth saying, what are you going to do? Uh, you're a traveling minister. How can you be a traveling minister without a car? What are you going to do? And he said, finally, he just said out loud, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Mr. Devil. I'm going to act like the word is true and I'm going to sleep. And he said he went to sleep. Well, he said he hadn't got in until, you know, early, way up in the morning. And so the next morning, his wife had let him sleep in. He said he heard the phone ring and and his wife answered the phone and said, well, yeah, he's here, but he didn't get in until, uh, 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 you know, early this morning, and I'm letting him sleep. And he said, I told her, I'll, I'll take it, I'll take it. And he said he got up and went to the phone, and it was a person that said, Brother Hagin, the Lord told me to bring you such and such amount of money. And he said, I believe that is God. Come right on over. And they brought him the money to make the car payment. Now, people will say, yeah, but what if they had already decided to do that? They had all, if they had already decided to do that, it was because he had made a decision, I'm going to act like the word's true. 
That's what you got to do. You just got to act like the word means what it means. And refuse the care because, folks, things are looking up. Even in the natural, things are looking up. There are times the, the world wants to say, well, things are going to get worse before they get better. Nope. They are getting better right now in the name of Jesus. The, the, the man of God has spoken and said this disease will, it, specifically, this disease called COVID-19 will be over much sooner than you think because Christian people all over this country praying have overwhelmed it. Now that's from the man of God. And the facts that I'm receiving are proving that out to be true. At some point, you got to decide, I'm going to believe God, and God's going to do what He said in the name of Jesus. So life will get back to normal. We'll all be back together soon, worshiping and praising God together. And until that day, you stay strong in faith, stay strong in the Word, and God will take care of you. Build your faith and frame your world by the Word of God. God bless you.